Günaydın Antalya, günaydın değerli katılımcılar, değerli misafirler. Dün konuşulduğu gibi demokrasi ve diplomasi beşiği olan bu kutsal topraklarda bulunmaktan çok büyük onur ve keyif duymaktayım. Hepinize hoş geldiniz. Good morning, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Thank you all for joining us to our discussion. Let me express our gratitude to the hosts of this event, the Government of the Republic of Turkey, Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu, for excellent organization of the Antalya Diplomacy Forum and for bringing us together. This morning, we are going to discuss regional cooperation in Asia, and the topic is of huge importance as Asia more than ever comes to the forefront of the global stage, becoming more visible, dependable, and indispensable. Many scholars and pundits claim the future is Asian. 21st century is Asian age, and so forth. I would remind you, for instance, the bestseller and global strategist Parag Hanna uh, wrote in his uh, best-selling book, The Future is Asian, that the 19th century was Europeanized, the 20th century was Americanized, but the 21st century is the, uh, uh, the Asian uh, century, the Asian age. We got a total time of one hour, including all speakers, and 10 minutes for questions and answers before we conclude. <coughs> I am a tough time manager. Please respect your time, respect your audience. For this, we have an impressive panel of distinguished speakers, prominent statesmen, and decision makers. His Excellency Abdulaziz Kamilov, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Uzbekistan. His Excellency Maktoum Shah Mahmoud Qureshi, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. His Excellency Sirojuddin Muhyiddin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Tajikistan. <coughs> His Excellency Dato Seri Hissamuddin Tun Hussein, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Malaysia, and His Excellency Ruslan Kazakhbaev, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kyrgyz Republic. It may be too obvious to state that each one of our panelists has contributed significantly to strengthening Asian regional co cooperation. I am Ambassador Kairat Saribai. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to moderate today's panel. In my current capacity, I'm executive director of the Secretariat of the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, <coughs> SICA in short, one of the facets of Asian regional cooperation. The conference seeks to promote trust and constructive dialogue among its 27 member states and eight observers, and during almost 30 years is part of the ongoing process of Asia gaining visibility and its own role on the international stage. I'm pleased to say that I look forward to hearing your extremely valuable inputs to a fruitful discussion. And now, it is my honor to introduce today's first speaker, <coughs> Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Abdulaziz Kamilov, whose illustrious career and exemplary drive have undoubtedly shaped Uzbekistan's foreign policy in the 21st century. His Excellency continues to play a significant role in spearheading Uzbekistan's active involvement in the international and pan-Asian community under the leadership of President Shavkat Mirziyoyev. The commitment of Uzbekistan to supporting its regional partners and setting an example for socio-economic development in Central Asia is irreplaceable in our region. Without further ado, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, distinguished foreign ministers, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, uh, I want to express deep gratitude to the brotherly people and the leadership of Turkey 
for traditional warm hospitality. Today's forum creates a conductive environment for all of us to jointly evaluate the outstanding issues on the agenda, identify the perspective directions of the regional and international cooperation and exchange views on the acute topics. The Atlanta Diplomacy Forum is especially important because it's being held at a time of pandemic, which is serving us a matter of serious trial for all of us. Uh, extending partnership among the states resolving the international issues by way of peace and political negotiations and the notion of diplomacy began acquiring a completely new meaning and essence. The information exchange and the new opportunities emerging in the sphere of advanced communications technologies requires the states to uh, <clears throat> entirely review their activities in the field of diplomacy and put them in the line with modern times demands. Since the sphere of diplomacy and its actors are constantly expanding with a new shape and format of the dialogue, the digital diplomacy is being widely used. The acute process and the notions described as the public diplomacy and the soft power are penetrating into a daily life. The most important feature of today is an innovation. Each sphere is being renovated rapidly, therefore it's time call to apply and step in line with innovations in diplomacy. We believe that the young people studying today in the field of international relations should have practical understanding of current changes and innovations. Uh, the forthcoming generation of young diplomats uh, shouldn't only well versed in history, international relations, economics, and social sphere, but also have a deep understanding of new concepts and uh, definitions such as internet diplomacy, innovative diplomacy, public diplomacy, and stand ready to develop the new approaches. Therefore, we have no doubts that Atlanta diplomacy Antalya Diplomacy Forum, which is being held today on the initiative of Turkey, is relevant and making great contribution to this uh, process. Uh, distinguished participants of the forum, speaking about modern international relations, it should be noted that Asia has begun <coughs> rising again since the 21st century. Asia is uh, more than ever presenting many opportunities with its uh, own uh, potential. Therefore, the new Asia initiative uh, put uh, forward by Turkey gives a new impetus to the expansion and development of cooperation between the countries uh, of the continent and uh, <coughs> pursuit of uh, mutual interests and common objectives. In this process, the positive changes in the Central Asia are also of profound importance. The large-scale reforms opens uh, opens and uh, renewal carried out in Uzbekistan under the leadership of President Shavkat Mirziyoyev in recent years are also reflected in the country's foreign policy, in particular in the relations with immediate neighbors. The establishment of an uh, atmosphere of stability and security in Central Asia and region, the development and strengthening of the friendly, good neighborly and mutually beneficial relations with the neighbors are identified as the priorities of the foreign policy of new Uzbekistan. As a result, the political dialogue and mutual trust have been strengthened in Central Asia. The constructive meeting of present presidents have been established. The comprehensive bilateral and multilateral cooperation in the region has reached a new level. Uh, in particular, as a result of the open constructive and pragmatic policy was based on towards Central Asia, complex issues such as rational use of water, delimitation, demarcation of the state borders, the efficient use of transport communications and crossing state borders between Uzbekistan and neighboring countries have been solved. Uzbekistan's trade turnover with Central Asian countries is growing on average by more than 50% a year per year. Uh, improving trade and economic relations between the Central Asian countries paved the way 
to increasing the investment attractiveness of the whole region. Uzbekistan believes that the prospects of sustainable development in Central Asia are directly linked with the establishment and development of peace in neighboring Afghanistan. It is vital to expand and deepen cooperation in, in particular to ensure and strengthen Afghanistan's integration with Central Asia through the implementation of regional in infrastructure, trade investment, transit and transport projects. Over the past four years, Uzbekistan has been expanding trade cooperation with Afghanistan and uh, is <clears throat> considering a number of major transport and communications projects, including the construction of the Mazari Sharif Herat, Mazari Sharif Kabul, Peshawar railways. Ladies and gentlemen, using this <clears throat> opportunity, I'd like to draw your attention to the upcoming international high-level conference will be held in Tashkent on 15, 16 uh, July this year, named Central and South Asia Regional Connectivity, Challenges and Opportunities. The purpose is to demonstrate strategic vision of strengthening connectivity in Central and South Asia, discussion of concrete proposals to utilize the transport and transit potential of both regions, ensuring access to promising uh, markets, attraction of investment, innovation and technology, intensification of humanitarian and tourism exchange. Dear friends, Uzbekistan is interested in developing international cooperation and dialogue in the framework of such major events as Antalya Diplomacy Forum. We express our deep gratitude to the President of the Republic of Turkey, His <coughs> Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and my brother, Foreign Minister Mevlut Çavuşoğlu, who initiated this forum and made a great contribution to its successful launching. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for setting the tone for our discussion. You mentioned about very topical issues for Central Asia, but uh, you mentioned also about the new air in the region. And uh, this air is very conducive to enrich the connectivity. And I am looking forward also to attend the upcoming conference uh, in the mid of July in Tashkent on regional connectivity because connectivity is in DNA of Asians. Thank you so much for your great st uh, statement. Our next speaker, actually, also this is the connectivity between Central Asia and South Asia, uh, is His Excellency Mahtoum Shah Mahmoud Qureshi, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Pakistan has always been an extremely valuable member of Pan-Asian regional organizations and community through its continued support to, of its neighbors and partners, not only in SICA, but in countless regional initiatives, such as the uh, Organization for Islamic Cooperation, the Economic Cooperation Organization, ECO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and the South Asia Association for Regional Cooperation. Your Excellency Minister, thank you for joining us this morning, and the floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking the Antalya Diplomacy Forum for the invitation. I would like to congratulate at the beginning uh, Foreign Minister of Turkey for a successful launch of the forum yesterday, and I'm honored to be on a panel with such prominent leaders from Asia. While talking about regional cooperation uh, in Asia, I would like you to have a look at how the world is perceiving Asia today. Asia is viewed as the continent of the 21st century. People believe that history will be made here. Asia is home to over 50% of the world's population. And today, in, and it's a huge market, and in this increasing uh, consumerism, world of consumerism, Asia will remain important. Uh, hence, Asia will also 
be facing challenges of urbanization. Asia, and there are regions in Asia that have shown dynamic economic growth, technological advances, human development, social change. Yet, let us not forget that there are areas and regions within Asia that live, many live beneath the poverty line. There's backwardness, deprivation, primitive practices are still visible within Asia. The Asian continent, as I speak, is afflicted with armed conflicts and sub-regional instability. Uh, and it is important that if we want growth and development, regional cooperation is essential for, for, for development and connectivity. For example, conflict in an instability in Afghanistan is a serious impediment in the east-west regional connectivity. Look at the possibilities of peace in Afghanistan. Projects, economically feasible projects like the Tapi gas pipeline, the CASA 1000 electric electricity transmission line, the transnational railway uh, connection that the Foreign Minister of Uzbekistan was referring to, they become a possibility, a reality. The Jammu and Kashmir dispute today is a serious impediment. SARC is a regional forum for economic development and cooperation. But this dispute has practically made SARC dysfunctional. Look at the situation uh, in Southeast Asia, the Myanmar situation. Look at the situation of North Korea in the North uh, East Asia. Gulf countries, Western Asia, the tensions between uh, Iran and neighbors. Look at the possibility of peace and stability and a better understanding, the impact that will have on regional cooperation and growth and, and, and activity, economic activity. Uh, Asia is being increasingly embroiled in the great power competition and confrontation. US, China, Russia. Uh, new security partnerships are being forged. I'm referring to Quad, and it is being viewed by some as a China containment exercise. The supply of uh, sophisticated weapons and advanced technologies to some countries will promote a new arms race in Asia. Seeds of a new Cold War are being sown in Asia. Countries are being forced to choose sides. To promote regional cooperation in Asia, we will have to view the region through our, in my view, geo-economic lens. Our focus will have to shift from geopolitics to geoeconomics in order to attract investments in Asia and in order to promote bilateral and regional trade within Asia. Our focus, in my view, for Asian regional cooperation will have to be built around three pillars. Peace, <clears throat> development partnerships, and prosperity. I would want to I would suggest the world to look at Gavadar as an economic hub for landlocked Afghanistan and Central Asian republics. 
to promote regional cooperation in Asia and achieve sustainable peace, we will have to concentrate on the resolution of regional disputes. In my view, the BRI and CPAC, the flagship project of BRI, will contribute to regional connectivity, leading to regional prosperity. There is ample room, in my view, in Asia for all nations to thrive peacefully and build economic trade and investment linkages. Asia must not become the theater of tensions induced from within or without. We should support a rules-based order, inclusive global order, to advance the objectives of peace, progress, and prosperity. COVID-19, ladies and gentlemen, is an unprecedented global challenge. It hasn't gone away, and there's talk of a fourth wave in October. So how can Asian regional cooperation uh, be built to face this challenge, which will have huge financial and economic implications for Asia in the days ahead. I would conclude by saying that if we want to promote regional cooperation in Asia, what is required? In my view, I am suggesting five things. If you look at five things, we have a very clear roadmap ahead of us. One, concentrate on sustainable development within Asia. Two, focus on poverty alleviation. And China, again, is a very good example of poverty alleviation. Engage with the world and international financial institutions for debt relief for developing countries within Asia to give us the fiscal space required to build our fragile healthcare system. Arresting illicit financial flows out of Asia gained made from proceeds of crime and corruption. And finally, tackling climate change. This is a new reality. Many countries, economies of Asia, our agrarian economies are more vulnerable to climate change uh, uh, in Asia. So how do, we, how do we build bridges and a better understanding to tackle this growing challenge? Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, very much for your enlightening speech. Uh, it is my firm belief that Pakistan's commitment to supporting regional processes is a key factor in the rise of Asia on the global stage. You mentioned uh, that instead of geopolitics, geoeconomic would be rather more conducive in, uh, the, in fostering the new role of uh, Asia in the global affairs. I appreciate very much your very thorough analysis as well as your uh, suggestions, very concrete five spheres, how we can uh, boost the regional cooperation and how we can make uh, the life of uh, this huge continent, the half of the global population more happier. Thank you so much once again. Now we're coming back. You mentioned about uh, CASA and CASA will start in Central Asia again. This is about the regional connectivity. So we will go back to Central Asia and uh, I'm very much delighted to give the floor to the, our next uh, panelist, His Excellency Minister Sirajuddin Mohriddin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Tajikistan. Tajikistan's commitment to strengthening relations with regional neighbors is helping to create important linkages between West, Southwest, and Central Asia. It is also a valuable member and proactive chair of regional fora such as Organization for Islamic Cooperation, SICA, and Shanghai Cooperation Organization. If I may, I would also like to personally thank you, Your Excellency, 
for inviting me to participate in the Heart of Asia Istanbul Process Conference in Dushanbe earlier this year. Your hospitality and generosity in hosting not only Sika but many of other Tajikistan's regional neighbors, partners, and international organizations are greatly appreciated. Without any further delay, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you, my dear friend Kairat, uh, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Salam alaikum, good morning. <coughs> At the outset, I would like to express my appreciation to the government of the Republic of Turkey for convening the Antalya Diplomacy Forum and then ar arranging it at high level. I am confident that the forum will uh, provide a solid platform for discuss uh, the uh, regional cooperation in Asia and to share information and best practices on further strengthening of the cooperation between uh, our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past few decades, Asia has become a dynamic region in the world and has shown impressive growth. Its enormous economic potential uh, has become a, a driving force behind the global development and stability. It is important <coughs> to develop and implement joint investment projects taking into account the mutual interests of the parties uh, by availing the great potential for investment cooperation. <coughs> this step will strongly contribute to both tangible regional cooperation and uh, the acceleration of economic growth in our countries. Development of cooperation in the uh, agrarian and industrial sectors would enable uh, to uh, explore their untapered potential. The development of the regional transport and communication infrastructure is another priority <coughs> area of interaction and uh, Tajikistan is keen to expand uh, further mutually beneficial regional cooperation in this area, uh, particularly in creating and strengthening transport connectivity with other states of the region. To this end, Tajikistan attached uh, particular importance to the creation of new and uh, restoration of regional transport and transit corridors. It is vital <coughs> to ensure smooth transit as Tajikistan and uh, other Central Asian countries are landlocked. Lack of access to sea hinders the development process and effective integration of the economies of all countries in the region into the international trade system and negatively affects the achievement of sustainable development. It is necessary to make uh, further efforts for creation of more attractive environment for transit traffic uh, by eliminating uh, various barriers and uh, obstacles to boost international and inter-regional transport and cargo upgrade transport security, uh, apply a flexible traffic policy and simplify uh, customs procedures. Uh, distinguished part uh, participants, the consequences of climate change and the growing demand for water resources associated with population growth and development of the region's economies dictate the need for uh, concerted actions in the field of integrated water resources management. Therefore, we are convinced that our joint efforts for implementation of water and energy projects will uh, significantly contribute 
to addressing many issues of sustainable development in the region. Tajikistan attached a great importance to the energy sector, which is another strategic dimension uh, since uh, it is key for overall socio-economic development. Its comp comprehensive and uh, effective use uh, can transform our countries uh, to major uh, regional uh, generators of green energy and strengthen our uh, capacity in achieve achievement uh, of the sustainable development goals. The construction and implementation of the power transmission lines, including CASA 1000 project, is very important. CASA, uh, the CASA 1000 initiative is a supreme example of cooperation between Central Asia and South Asia, as mentioned by my friend, uh, Minister uh, Qureshi. Building new assets and uh, modernizing uh, existing hydropower plants with the use of renewable source of clean energy uh, as the base for the formation of green economy uh, should be among our priorities. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, which had a negative impact on the socioeconomic development, livelihoods, public services, and other areas around the world, once again clearly demonstrated that uh, the need for closer interaction uh, and cooperation to overcome the global crisis uh, successfully. Uh, the tourism has suffered the most among other areas as a result of the pandemic. Consequently, strengthening regional cooperation to create favorable environment for closer, effective, and mutually beneficial cooperation in this area would be reasonable. As uh, time has shown, the level of threats and challenges to uh, regional security is not going down despite the measures taken uh, on their uh, counteraction. The intensification of the activities of uh, terrorist and extremist organizations and groups in the region is clear. It is alarming that Terrorists and extremists are adapting uh, to new realities by inventing and applying new forms and methods uh, in committing terrorist attacks. In this regard, strengthening cooperation in the fight against terrorism and extremism, drug smuggling, uh, smuggling growing activities of uh, transnational organized uh, criminal groups, cybercrime, human trafficking, as well as the influence of uh, religious radicalism come to the uh, fore. Uh, the establishment of peace and uh, tranquility in uh, Afghanistan is an essential prerequisite for uh, sustainable security and stability in the region. Hence, uh, we fully support international and regional efforts aimed at uh, finding peaceful ways to resolve the Afghan issues. Most importantly, uh, this process should be Afghan-led and Afghan-owned. I would like to stress the importance of the uh, outcomes of the ninth ministerial conference, uh, Heart of Asia, Istanbul process, entitled Strengthening uh, Consensus for Peace and Development held in Dushanbe on 30th of March 2021, and the adoption of its final document, the Dushanbe Declaration, highlighting uh, the uh, joint actions uh, to bring peace in Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that only mutual understanding and sense of responsibility, awareness of the world community, and mutual trust will help all of us uh, to bring prosperity to our region 
and to overcome global challenges and threats. In conclusion, let me underscore once again that the Republic of Tajikistan has always been and will be advocating uh, for a fair and a democratic world order uh, with uh, a favorable climate uh, created for enhancement of constructive, mutually beneficial, and friendly relationships. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for such a notable and very informative uh, statement. Uh, no doubt that Tajikistan has a key role to play in linking diverse regions of Asia. You mentioned about landlocked Central Asia. Indeed, I think there, uh, there is a wisdom of all Central Asians to be not landlocked, but rather land-linked uh, different sub-regions. And uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, bringing together the Pan-Asian community on crucial issues uh, we can do it only through multilateral diplomacy. Thank you once again for your uh, insightful uh, remarks. It is now my honor to introduce our next speaker, His Excellency Dato Seri Hissamuddin bin Tun Hussein, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Malaysia and a dedicated public servant. Malaysia is an in invaluable member of the Asian regional community, a founding member of ASEAN, a signatory state of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, and what is more important for me is observer state, may I say so far, of SICA. I'm confident that His Excellency will enlighten us with the unique perspective of Malaysia on the future of Asian regional cooperation. Your Excellency, Mr. Minister, the floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today's topic, regional cooperation in Asia, is so timely. As mentioned by our moderator and br brother Qureshi, it is timely because the rise of Asia is one of the defining characteristics of the 21st century. Asia is considered the fastest growing economic region, which will soon account for nearly two thirds of the global growth. Southeast Asia, to be more specific, the Association of Southeast Nations, the 10 nations of ASEAN lies in the center of this dynamic region. As the sole ASEAN foreign minister represented in this forum, it is in the interest of Malaysia and ASEAN to shape our economic and security architecture to ensure such dynamics will continue to bring about peace, security, stability and prosperity in the wider Asia region. ASEAN has a population of over 622 million people. We have one of the largest economies and it is believed that by 2050, we will have the fourth largest economy in the world. In 2020, the estimated total GDP of all ASEAN states amounted to approximately 3 trillion US dollars. The GDP of the ASEAN region has also skyrocketed, reflecting the region's thriving economy. However, we must address the pandemic the world is facing. Unfortunately, instead of uniting us, COVID-19 has divided us further. As President Erdogan said, the pandemic has further deepened the gap between the rich and the poor, ignited the recurrence of social unrest, revived irregular migration routes, and most striking is the rise in deaths around the world. 80 million people displaced, 46 act active conflicts, 
696 million people living in poverty. Terrorism, racism, xenophobia, these are the key issues plaguing the global population. The Antalya Diplomacy Forum is crucial to address this. 34 foreign ministers, Ed, eight heads of state. If a forum like this cannot unite us, what chance do other platforms have to achieve what we are trying to do today? Due to time constraints, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to just speak on just four matters which I feel strongly relate to regional cooperation in Asia. Myanmar. ASEAN must be realistic with our goals. Two months ago, ASEAN leaders met in Jakarta, gathering behind a unified resolve to address the issue. As an outcome, they reached an important breakthrough with the five-point consensus to assist Myanmar towards return to normalcy. However, progress from the five-point consensus has been painfully slow. But I can confirm today that my ASEAN colleagues and I are working actively 24-7 to implement this consensus and find a way forward. Secondly, South China Sea. Many view this issue purely based on lines and dots that intersect and diverge on a maritime map. In the world of international relations, all elements need to be analyzed through a geopolitical lens, taking into account power, geography, diversity. Geopolitical balance in our region, especially between the United States and China, is dynamic and no country remains unaffected. As my brother Mavlut said yesterday, there is a constant shift in the balance of power. States are in a competition, even a struggle, besides cooperation. This is incredibly relatable to us in Southeast Asia. The third issue, Palestine. Malaysia is heartened to see the collective voice of Muslim nations emerge louder and stronger as a result of the recent attacks. I would like to commend my brother Qureshi, who is in the panel with me today, for persevering in the never-ending fight for the Palestinian cause. Malaysia is ready to assist and work together taking any necessary steps towards this regard. The Ummah expects our leadership, and the Ummah expects our courage, especially in these trying times. But however, there is a new phenomenon about greater awareness and public opinion, even in the United States and Europe from the recent crisis. It is no longer a trend. And we need to revive the spirit of passion for the Palestinian cause. Even if it starts with a few, I'm confident that together with Malaysia, we can galvanize and ignite a new revival on Palestinian awareness to the world. It is important as our global collective voice before this has contributed to the ceasefire and has caused the United Nations Security Council to eventually reach a consensus on the matter. So whilst we now focus on humanitarian and reconstruction efforts, we must continue to fight for the rights of Palestine who are still 
being oppressed, still being evicted from their homes, and even worse, still being killed. My fourth and final point, regional economic integration. This is where Asia triumphs. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, and the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, are truly major steps forward. RCEP reduces economic friction among countries that account for about 30% of the world's population. Members such as China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and all 10 Southeast Asian countries stand to benefit. RCEP combined with CPTPP will deepen economic integration within East Asia and enhance the region's prominence as a trading center. Members will link their strengths in technology, in manufacturing, agriculture, and natural resources. Our economies will become more efficient individually and as a block, more competitive globally. East Asia will also become more attractive to investors and trade partners from Europe and Latin America. This is how we can effectively emerge stronger from the pandemic, united in our resolve for the economic benefit of our people. So in conclusion, we are all interdependent. No country is truly an island. We need to bring the resources and comparative advantages of multiple nations together to resolve undoubtedly complex problems. The international system is truly crying out, as Brother Melwood pointed out, trying to survive in strong turbulence. The only real truism is that nations need each other to achieve substantive, enduring results that benefit not just one country, but the global population. This Antalya Diplomacy Forum can emerge as a way forward for us to achieve this aim. Thank you. Wa billahi tawfiq wa hidayah. Wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your very thought provoking uh, remarks through Malaysia's contributions to crucial regional processes, including ASEAN and RCEP, the newest mechanism in promoting Asia's regional and global economic integration. Asia indeed is becoming a key decision maker in both politics and international trades. I would also remind uh, the great uh, video uh, from the Secretary, UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who was actually re-elected, by the way, uh, and he said that the world needs nowadays more inclusive multilateralism. I think that that was the very right expression. We continued our panel. We're actually approaching to the end. We have uh, uh, another eight minutes, but I can ask probably organizers to extend our panel to another 10 minutes in order to have some questions. Uh, but our last but not least uh, speaker is very distinguished uh, minister, not because of his surname. Uh, this is no secret that I'm uh, coming from Kazakhstan and Mr. Uh, Minister, His Excellency Ruslan Kazakhpaev is a Kyrgyz uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs. I thank uh, the Kyrgyz Republic continues to embrace the spirit of partnership and mutually beneficial cooperation with its neighboring states and with Asia as a whole. This includes proactive membership in SICA, where the Kyrgyz Republic acts 
as co-coordinator of human dimension alongside with Uzbekistan as coordinator and Kazakhstan as co-coordinator, and promoting economic connectivity within the Eurasian Economic Union. Your Excellency Minister, the floor is yours. Sarıbay, söz hakkı için size teşekkür ederim. Değerli forum katılımcıları, baylar ve bayanlar. İlk önce bu diplomatik forumda yer alan herkes ağırlamaktan kardeş Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Cumhurbaşkanı Recep Tayyip Erdoğan Beyefendi'ye, Dışişleri Bakanı kardeşim Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu'na, tüm Türkiye Dışişleri Bakanlığı ekibine ve Kardeş Türk halkına misafirperverliği ve sıcak karşılamalar için en içten şükranlarımı sunuyorum. <gülüyor> Antalya Forumunun ortaya çıkışı ve gelişimi, dünya halklarının barışı, destekleme ve güvenliği koruma ortak arzusunu yansıttı. Forum katılımcılarının özü diplomasi yoluyla karşılıklı güvenin teyidi olan yeni bir dünya düzeni kavramının Sıkı ve sarsılmaz başlatıcıları ve takipçileri olduğu uluslararası topluma gösterilmiştir. Bugün Antalya Forumu'nun yenilikçi diplomatik yaklaşımlarla yeryüzünde güvenlik, barış ve istikrarı korumak için işbirliğini geliştiren yetkili bir küresel platform olma yolunda başarıyla ilerlediğini iddia edebiliriz. Kurulduğu günden bu yana bölgede siyasi, ekonomik, çevresel ve insanı, insani işbirliğine odaklanan Antalya Forumu, medeniyetler ve hoşgörü anlayışının desteklenmesinde çok şey başarmıştır. Şu anda çok kutuplu bir dünya kurma ve ekonomik küreselleşme süreci gelişmeye devam etmekte. Bilimsel ve teknolojik ilerleme yeni değişimleri beraberinde getirmekte. Tüm dünya ülkelerinin halkları kalıcı barış ve ortak refah içinde yaşamaktadır. İnsanlar daha iyi bir gelecek yaratmayı çok iyi sağlıyor. Ayrıca dünyanın hala sakin olmadığının, insanlığının karşı karşıya olduğu yeni zorlukların yerini birbirinin aldığının, barış ve kalkınmanın nedeninin zor görevleri yerine getirme ve uzun bir yol kat etmeye çağrıldığının da farkında olmalıdır. Değerli forum katılımcıları, son 10 yılda dünya üretiminin artmaya devam ettiği ancak ihraç edilen malların payının birkaç yüzde puan düştüğüne dair ilginç bir gerçeği sizlerle paylaşmak istiyorum. Bu düşüş ne ticari anlaşmazlıklarının bir sonucu ne de yaklaşan bir yavaşlamanın işaretidir. Aksine gelişmekte olan Asya'da açıkça gözlenen sağlıklı ekonomik büyümeyi büyümeyi yansıtmaktadır. Tüketim arttıkça bu ülkelerde üretilen mallar daha önce olduğu gibi daha yüksek yaşam standartına sahip ülkelere ihraç etme yerine yerel pazarda satılmaktadır. Bu Asya ekonomilerinin büyümesi gösteriyor, büyümesini gösteriyor. Bugün Asya kıtası dünyadaki internet kullanıcılarının yarısıdır. Asya'daki çok sayıda dijital tüketici yenilikçi teknolojiler sektörünün gelişimini desteklemektedir. Asyalı internet şirketleri uzun zamandır Asya kıtasının ötesine geçen küresel bir dijital ekosistem inşa ediyor. Tüm bu değişimlerinin kumülatif etkisi küresel ekonomi içindeki Asya'nın dinamik ve sürdürebilir bir bölgeye dönüşmesi olmuştur. Ekonomik yapı çeşitliliği, gelir düzeyleri ve kaynak kullanabildiği ve bilgisel entegrasyonu hızlandırmaktadır. Bölgede daha derin ekonomik entegrasyon, Asya'nın potansiyelini daha geniş bir şekilde ortaya koymaktadır. Bu bağlamda Türk dili konuşan ülkeler işbirliği konseyi üye olan ülkelerinin rolü son derece hissedilebilir. Ticaret yollarının ana rotaları bu bölgeselerden geçer. Bu devletlerin bulunduğu alan Türk halklarının bütünleşme işleviyle koridorun tarihsel rolünü oynamalarını sağlar ve medeniyetlerinin kültürel ve finansal akışlarının 
dünya dinlerinin ve siyasi e, dünya görüşlerinin buluşma yeridir. Entegrasyon ivme kazanırken Asya'nın diğer gelişmekte olan pazarlara olan bağlantılar da güçleniyor. Asya ve Orta Doğu arasındaki ticaret ve finansal bağları arttırma eğilimi vardır. Bir zamanlar İpek ve Baharat ticaret olan İpek yolu, artık petrol akışları, imalat ve yatırım için bir rota haline geldi. Körfez ihracatının yarısından fazlası Asya'ya gidiyor ve ithalatının beşte birinden fazlası Asya'dan geliyor. Buna ek olarak İslami finansal ürün ve hizmetlerin ortaya çıkması, farklı kıtalardaki finansal hizmet sağlayıcılarını bu yeni rotada ticaret etmek için bir araya gelmiştir. Yeni İpek yolu ekonomik ilerleme ve refah için daha büyük fırsatlara kapatıyor. Asya'nın küresel ekonomide artan rolü dünya siyasi ve ekonomik toplumunda orantılı oy haklarına ve temsiline sahip olması ihtiyacını daha güçlendirmektedir. Asya'nın beklentilerinin daha iyi anlaşılması ve alınan tartışmalar ve kararlar için uluslararası ve bir de, e, değerlendirme yapılmalıdır. Bu küresel sorunların zorluklarına daha kapsamlı ve yetkili yaklaşımlar seçmeye yardımcı olacaktır. Bu süreç bölgesel ve çok taraflı kurumların karşılıklı saygı ve daha fazla katılımını gerektirecektir. Aynı zamanda çevremizdeki dünyanın bu kadar emsalsiz bir hızla geliştiği ve daha birbirine bağımlı ve kırılgan hale geldiği bu modern küreselleşme ve dijitalleşme çağında güven inşa etmek için bir sistem ve mekanizmalarının geliştirilmesi ve devletlerin istikrarı korumak ve çatışmayı önlemek için canlandırılması özellikle önem kazanmaktadır. Bugün bölgede bu aşamada caydırıcılık görevi gören gelen bazı nesne sorunlar olduğu herkes anlıyor. Devletler arası ilişkilerde gerginlik ve çatışmaların azaltılmasının yanı sıra etnik dinler arası ve sınır ötesi etkileşimde anlaşmaya varılmasında ilerlemenin önemli bir koşulu olarak güvene her zaman öncelik verilmiştir. Değerli baylar ve bayanlar, sınır sonurları da dahil olmak üzere mevcut bölgesel anlaşmasızlıkların yalnızca karşılıklı görüşmeye yoluyla barışçıl bir şekilde çözülmesi gerektiğine ikna olduk. Devlet sınırlarımız bölünmemeli, güven ve işbirliği sınırları, dost sınırlar haline gelmelidir. Bu bakımdan dikkatimizi güven ve dostluk ortamının gelişmesine olumlu yetki edebilecek somut önlemlerin uygulanmasına odaklamak uygun görünmektedir. Forumumuzun olanaklarını aktif diyalog ve sürdürebilir kalkınma için ortak bir arzu ile Asya toplumunda müreffek bir topluluk oluşturmak için kullanmalıyız. Bu bağlamda Asya'nın Avrupa ve Orta Doğu ile kara taşımacılığı ve iletişim bağlantısının yeniden sağlanmasını öngören İpek yolunda küresel ekonomik hedefleri ilerlemeyi amaçlayan fikir giderek daha fazla önem kazanmaktadır. Kırgız Cumhuriyeti, demiryolu ve karayolu projelerinin uygulanması yoluyla ulaşım ve iletişim bağlantılarının geliştirilmesine katkıda bulunmaya hazırdır. Bu bakımdan bu güzel hakı ileride Bakü Tiflis Kars demiryoluna bağlamak için Çin Kırgızistan Özbekistan demiryolu projesine yönelik çalışmalarının yoğunlaştırılması çok önemlidir. Bu yol Şanghay'dan Londra'ya sürekli bir demiryolu bağlantısı sağlayabilir. Buna yek olarak Kırgız Cumhuriyeti temiz ve yenilenebilir hidroelektrik için büyük bir potansiyele sahiptir. Asya'nın hızlı endüstriyel ve dijital gelişiminin yanı sıra çevrenin korunmasına gereken özen ışığında şüphesiz en çok aranan enerji kaynağı haline gelecektir. Bu bağlamda Asya'da entegrasyonu güçlendirmek için hidroelektrik tesislerinin kapasitesini arttırmak ve yeni hidroelektrik santralleri inşa etmek için ortak projelerde işbirliği yapmaya hazır olduğumuzu ifade ediyoruz. İnanıyorum ki ulaştırma ve enerji altyapısının ortak gelişimi, ticaret ilişkilerini yoğunlaştırmayı, bölgedeki tüm devletlerin ekonomik potansiyelini arttırmayı ve birçok acil sosyoekonomik sorunu çözmeyi mümkün olacaktır. 
Bununla birlikte genel olarak son yıllarda Aysa ülkelerinin ortak çabalarıyla eşitlik, karşılıklı fayda, ilerici kalkınma ve şefaatlik ile karakterize çok yönlü ve çok seviyeli bir bölgesel işbirliği ortamının geliştiğini görmekten büyük mem memnuniyet duyuyoruz. Eski bir tarihe ve parlak bir kültüre sahip Asya halklarının bunu yapmak için yeterli bilgelik ve yeteneği göstereceğine ve kalıcı barışın ve ortak refahın hüküm sürdüğü yeni bir Asya inşa etmek için ortak bir çaba göstereceğine olan güvenimiz tamdır. İlginiz için teşekkür ederim. Çok değerli bakanım, değerli Ruslan Atbayolu kardeşim, bu forumumuza ve özellikle panelimize katkılarınızdan dolayı içten teşekkürümü sunuyorum. Güven, hakikaten barışçıl yaklaşım, İpek yolu, yeni değişim gibi çok güncel konulara el değdiniz. Katkılarınızdan tekrar tekrar teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Şimdi anladığım kadarıyla bizim vaktimiz çok sınırlı. Um, I, I, I got the message that we are limited to one hour. So that is why, unfortunately, we exhausted our time for this panel. So in conclusion, maybe I would like just to thank all again our distinguished panelists for valuable uh, contributions to our discussion on the future of Asian regional cooperation. Undeniably, the significance of Asia on the global stage is rising rapidly. It is through multilateral initiatives such as Antalya Diplomacy Forum, Asia in You, and definitely SICA, as well as countless more institutions like ASEAN, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, some others, we can move from isolation, exclusion, to connectivity, interdependence, and cooperation. Thank you all. Once again, I would like to express my special thanks to the Minister uh, Mevlut Çavuşoğlu, to the Government of the Republic of Turkey, to all ADF organizers for bringing us together at this wonderful event. I thank you all. Let's have a family photo. Let's have a family photo.